<clears throat> thanks. Uh, thanks for coming, and I'm glad you are here and to join us topic. Let's wait one more minute. Thanks, thanks for joining the session. Uh, today, I'm going to uh, share the best practice of compression and the decompression codex in Spark with you. Uh, I'm Sophia. Uh, I am a, a big data software engineer from Intel, China, and I'm focused on Spark performance profiling and uh, optimization for Intel architectures. Uh, this is the uh, outlines today. Uh, first, we will introduce the compression needs and uh, modifications. And then, we will uh, go through the uh, data compression pipelines in Spark. And uh, uh, next, we will um, give a general introduction for the experiment compression, compression codex information uh, we did. And, uh, uh, then we will give a general overview for our Intel Codec Accelerator architecture. And at last, we will share our performance analysis result and uh, talk about uh, the future works. Why we need data compression? Uh, since nowadays, there are uh, large volumes of data need to process uh, every day. Uh, data compression can help us to reduce the data volumes and save the uh, storage space. And as we all know, Spark is a kind of uh, distributed computer engine for big data, for big data processing. So uh, there are large volumes of data will be transferred uh, to among uh, clusters. So uh, data compression can help uh, uh, to reduce the disk uh, I/O operations and network I/O operations, which can help us to optimize the workload uh, performance. Uh, compression and decompression data will co consume the CPU resources. So uh, uh, for the high compression ratio codex, uh, there may exist uh, the uh, computer uh, overhead, computation overhead. Um, What are our motiva motivations? Uh, there, are many, uh, there are many kind of uh, compression codecs supported in uh, Hadoop or Spark or uh, other big data ecosystems. We want to understand uh, uh, the popular compression codecs in Spark. And uh, we want to take advantage of Intel optimized uh, libraries or accelerator hardware. Uh, for data compression or decompression to offload the CPU resources. Uh, this is a general data compression pipeline uh, in Spark. Uh, for the uh, compressed data which is stored uh, in the H HDFS, when Spark doing uh, map operations, it needed uh, to decompress the input data. And for the uh, immediate intermediate data H maps output, we can use uh, compression codex to, to compress the data before uh, shuffle operations. And for the reduced input data, we need to decompress the data before uh, reduce operations. And uh, 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 for the reduced output data, we want to uh, store the data to HDFS, we can use data compression uh, to compress the data and write it to the HDFS. So uh, for the um, H HDFS output data and the input data, uh, it, will use, it will use Hadoop interface uh, for data compression and decompression. We can uh, call it as a source data codec in, in this session. And for the map output and the reduced input data, uh, it uh, will use a Spark I/O compression codex um, uh, for the data compression and decompression. We can call it as a shuffle codec in this session. 
and uh, uh, compress the map output uh, file before they are shuffled across uh, clusters uh, will help to uh, reduce the disk and the network I.O. operations. Uh, for the different operations, what, what are their uh, I.O. characteristics? For the HDFS uh, related uh, codecs, generally it is a sequence read and write, and uh, generally it is one time read and write. For the shuffle operations, uh, because shuffle operations is, uh, typically involves uh, many data uh, copying across the executors and the machines. So um, uh, generally, it is a uh, random uh, read and write. And uh, uh, since uh, the shuffle may have uh, many it multiple iterations, so uh, it is, uh, generally it is multi times read and write. Uh, this is uh, uh, we 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 picked up uh, seven kind of um, compression codex in our experiment. Four of them are. Uh, open source the compression codecs. And uh, the other three are based on Intel optimization libraries. The open source the compression codecs, uh, we, we choose the ZSTD, uh, GZIP, LZ4, and the L L Snappy, which are very popularly used in uh, current in Spark. And the other three uh, is IGZIP, which is based on Intel Intelligent Storage Accelerator Library optimization. And uh, the Zlib, Zlib IPP and LZ4 IPP, which is based on Intel integrated performance primitive libraries. And according to the uh, degrees of compression and uh, the compression speed, we can separate the, uh, the seven kind of uh, compression codex to two categories. Uh, the first category is uh, high compression codex, high compression ratio codex, and the other is uh, high throughput codex. And for the seven, uh, seven uh, kind of codecs we picked up, four of them are supported uh, uh, compression level adjustment. Uh, the ZSTD, ZLIB, IPP, ZLIB, and ITZIP support a compression level adjustment, uh, while codec LZ4 and Snappy does not support. Uh, increasing the compression level uh, we will have better compression but will expense more CPU and memory resources. For the, compre uh, for the uh, compression level, for the uh, codex which supported the compression level adjustment, we did some experiment on the TPCDS benchmark data generation test. It is a kind of um, parquet format. Uh, the result shows that there is no big data size difference among different compression levels uh, in, in TPCDS parquet format. Uh, so uh, the, the performance should be have, uh, similar for the different compression level codex for, the, uh, for parquet format data. Uh, that is why, that is because Parquet is built for support a very efficient comp, uh, compression and encoding schema. Parquet is a, uh, is a kind of column uh, format, columnar format. It is a columnar storage and uh, the data compression and the decompression for each is for each column chunk. And each column chunk uh, um, has same data types, even has same data, uh, have, has same data values. So uh, the default compression level is usually uh, effective. And this is our Intel codec accelerator uh, architectures. Uh, our Intel codec accelerator uh, libraries uh, is implemented as a type of shim layer. Uh, it can provide the compression and the decompression codecs uh, for Spark Hadoop uh, to make use to make use the accelerate hardware to, uh, uh, to do data compression and decompression to offload the CPU resources. Uh, it is easy to integrate to current systems. Uh, from the right, uh, red part, uh, we, uh, from, uh, we can see that uh, Intel Hadoop and Intel Spark codec, uh, we implemented the, the interface of Hadoop and Spark. Uh, and and we, it, 
um, for the compression codex and the Hadoop compressors. It is a, uh, we extended the class from uh, the Hadoop and the Spark. For the shared, shared Java level interface, it can help to uh, forward the Hadoop and the Spark compression and decompression request from Java layer to uh, C, under layer C. For the shared C uh, libraries, uh, it is a wrapper for the current existing codex. It can call, call the, well, as a codec ad, adapter layer. And it can help uh, to self-adapt to codec according to the, config, uh, according to the config configuration from Java. And it can call the Intel optimized accelerator library using AVX 5.12 and the QAT or FPGA to use, uh, to call the accelerator hardware to help the uh, data compression and the decompression. Uh, from this chart, uh, we can see that the accelerator hardware for the, for the QAT and the ISA and ISA-L, it is the uh, Intel Intelligent Storage Accelerator Hardware. Uh, that it is available on Intel Scalex platforms. And for the open source uh, codec ZSTD, uh, we also can build it with Intel uh, AVX 512 support to accelerate the data compression and decompression. Uh, from workload perspectives, um, for the each maps, uh, input and output data compression and decompression, and for the map output and the reduce output data compression and decompression. All of this decompression and compression can use Intel codec. Uh, it, and and uh, the Java layer will forward the request to the uh, native layer. The native layer will, call, uh, will use the Intel optimized library to use the accelerator hardware uh, to offload the CPU uh, resources to, help to, to accelerate the data compression and decompression. Uh, this is our performance analysis result. Uh, uh, this page is based on micro benchmark. We picked up the LZ bench for, uh, for, for analysis. The LZ bench is a, a in-memory open source benchmark, which means to model raw algorithms performance. Our experiment, uh, the result is based on Intel uh, Broadware and the Scalac platform's single node. The DRAM configuration is 384 gigabytes, and we use uh, eight SSD. The result shows that uh, the ZSTD, Zlib, Zlib IPP, and IGZip has higher compression uh, ratios. And for the uh, decompression throughput, we can see that the LZ4 IPP and the LZ4 has higher uh, throughput for the decompression data. And uh, for the uh, compression throughput, uh, besides the LZ4 IPP, LZ4 and the Snappy has higher uh, compression throughput, the IGZIP, which is based on Intel Intelligent Storage Acceleration Library, also has a high compre uh, compression throughput. Besides the, bench, uh, the micro benchmark, we also picked up the two uh, famous end-to-end -end benchmark uh, to, do the data, uh, to do the experiment uh, to understand uh, the compre uh, compression uh, codex. Uh, the first one is the uh, TBCDS benchmark. It is a famous benchmark. Uh, we just picked up, pick up uh, nine queries uh, as a subset in our experiment. The data scale is 10 terabyte, and the data format is parquet format. And the other benchmark we choose is the high bench sort workload. The sort workload is also a famous benchmark, famous workload. The data scale we, we experiment here is um, 4.1 terabyte, and uh, the data input format is a sequence format. We did the experiment both on Intel uh, Scalac and uh, hardware platforms with eight nodes, uh, one master and seven worker nodes. This is the uh, TPCDS sub subset throughput benchmark uh, result. 
Um, from the chart, we can see that uh, both SSD and HDD uh, shows that a higher compression ratio codex has better performance on Intel uh, Broadwell platforms, especially for the codec ZSTD. And uh, Intel optimized the codec ZLib IPP and IGZIP has relatively better performance than others. And the high compression ratio, using high compression ratio codecs is much more important uh, to HDD than SSD. That is because HDD has limited I.O. Uh, PS. And uh, from the right chart, we can see that uh, SSD uh, brings about two times to 3.5 times uh, performance boost compared to the HDD. And for the uh, uh, left chart, we can see that the purple, the purple data is from uh, Intel Scalic platforms. Uh, Scalic platforms can um, has about uh, 1.3 times performance boost than uh, Broadway platforms for all the compression codecs. Uh, even they have same uh, disk configurations and memory configurations here. Uh, this page is about the short workload benchmark result. The result also shows that uh, higher configuration ratio codecs like uh, 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 ZSTD and uh, ZLib IPP IGZIP as source data has better performance. Uh, the result is aligned with the TPCDS benchmark uh, in last page. And uh, since sort workload has a large number of shuffle uh, data uh, during the, the workload running, so we also did some uh, experiment for the shuffle codex comparison here. Um, the left chart shows that the high throughput codec, um, the LZ4 IPP, which is based on Intel integrated uh, performance primitive libraries, and the default LZ4 IPP has better performance uh, than others as Spark Shuffle Codec. And uh, from the uh, right, uh, left chart, we can see that uh, we can do some uh, comparison um, between the ZSTD codecs and, and the no data compressions in sort workload. We can see that uh, generally it has a, a nearly uh, two times performance boost compared with the no data compression. And uh, from the uh, chart, we can see that um, the ZLib IPP, uh, which is based on Intel optimization, um, it has a, a, a similar compression ratios like the default uh, uh, ZZIP, but uh, it has about 1.2 times performance and better than the default ZZIP. This is a uh, tuning tips uh, for the sort performance uh, tuning. Uh, since a sort workload has a large number of data shuffle uh, during the workload running, so the parameter spark SQL shuffle partitions uh, impact the performance result. Uh, we reduce the shuffle uh, partition number from uh, 40 times class parameters to 10 times. Uh, it has uh, about 17% uh, performance improve. But since more data processing in one task uh, would cause the GC time uh, increase, so it may need some tuning um, based on your uh, clusters. And this is the key takeaways uh, from um, the benchmark, uh, micro benchmark, and the two end to end uh, benchmarks uh, we experiment. Uh, we can see that uh, well, you'd better to choose the high compression ratio codecs uh, for a source data compression codec for I.O. intensive workload. Uh, why I said uh, I.O. intensive workload here? And, uh, because uh, higher compression codecs uh, also uh, need to consume more CPU resources. So if uh, it is a computation, uh, it is a, a CPU intensive workload, uh, you may have a CPU comp computation overhead here. But you can use, uh, 
you can use the, the, the Intel FPGA or QAT to offload the, the CPU resources. Uh, and uh, the result shows that we better use high throughput uh, codecs for spark shuffle compression, uh, such as the LZ4IPP based on Intel optimization and LZ4. Uh, high compression uh, ratio codecs uh, reduced the, the I.O. and the network pressure, but uh, it will consume small CPU resources. Um, and uh, uh, both the two end-to-end -end performance uh, shows that ZSTD uh, has a high compression ratio and uh, acceptable compression throughput. So it can qualify as uh, both reasonable comp compressor, reasonable strong compressor and a fast one. Uh, the best, uh, oh, best balance of compression codecs uh, also depends on the cl your cluster characteristics and uh, your workloads. This is uh, our future plan. Uh, we, we will, in the future, we, we plan to open source uh, our Intel uh, Codec Accelerator project. Uh, and we'll make it as well support the library. And we are working on the codec compati compatibility support. Uh, uh, for example, we, we, will, um, add, uh, we will use, uh, we plan to uh, implement uh, the use uh, codec Zilib IPP based on Intel optimization uh, to, to decompress the default GZ format data which can uh, help to uh, reduce the, the CPU computation overhead. And we plan to integrate the more IA optimization codecs along with the, uh, the acceleration li library release on the uh, different platforms. And we plan also want to introduce uh, more big data frameworks uh, like Kazonja and HBase. And besides the uh, data compression and the decompression, uh, in the future, we will support more types of compression codecs, um, uh, like the in data encryption and the decompression, decryption. And we will keep release the new version along with the new, new Intel platform release and uh, all the new accelerating hardware uh, release, libraries release. Uh, this is all uh, in my talk today. Um, thanks. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, to to ask. Ask. And uh, if you have uh, any questions later, you also can contact with me and we can talk more details uh, offline, yeah. Hello, um, I'm curious about uh, the um, uh, encryption support you mentioned. I recall a commit to the Hadoop project by Intel for supporting uh, the encryption algorithms and some of the CPUs. Sorry, can you speak loudly? Sure. Um, I recall a, a commit to the Hadoop project by Intel for encryption algorithms in some of the CPUs uh, a couple years ago. I was curious how the planned encryption support would be different from that. Uh, can you repeat your <laughs> question again? Sure. Um, in the Hadoop project, uh, Intel committed some support for uh, in-processor improvements to various encryption algorithms a couple of years ago, as I recall? Uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, it is a future plan. Okay. Maybe uh, we, we can talk about uh, the, the details uh, sure. uh, offline. Thank you. Mm, thanks. Um, hi, I have hi. a question. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, any ETA on the open sourcing your codex? ETA, when can we see it in the open source market? Uh, 
Zian. Sorry. Uh, your question is: uh, We are are we working on open source the project? Yes. So yes. when can we see it? Yes, we are open. Open. We are working on open source uh, the the projects and uh, the process is on is undergoing. Uh, the open source process is undergoing. Uh, we will release our Intel Codec Accelerate libraries uh, later. Uh, later, as in, is there an ETA in this year, next year? Uh, I think it should be in this year. Maybe we can announce the result uh, the, in next uh, times or next uh, other sessions, I, I think. Okay, thanks. Thanks. I have the same question. I was also curious as to when. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we plan to release the project, uh, I think, uh, maybe the, uh, in in. September, maybe, yeah. What's the best way to keep tabs on it? Like, just in case it comes out before that, do we just keep like, searching for it? So What's the best way to track it, like keep tabs on it was my question. Like, do we just like keep searching for it or is there somewhere that you um, post on your releases? Uh, oh, we, we, I think uh, for the open source, uh, we will open source the project and the way we will um, uh, acceptable accept the, the uh, other patches uh, from the GitHub and, uh, and feel free to uh, s submit your patches uh, to our project okay. later. Thanks. Hi, um, uh, just Hi. a quick question. Um, did you ever find the default of gzip on Parquet for compression useful in your research or did you always find an advantage switching away to like uh, Zlib or LZ4 or some of the others you tested? Uh, your question is the gzip in parquet format? Yeah, I I'm, I'm, guess I'm just wondering, did you find examples where the defaults people are probably using when they're not really thinking about this really were useful or whether people should generally consider looking at uh, changing the compression codec? Uh, I don't know whether I understand it right. Uh, maybe you, your question is, uh, the default gzip for the parquet format, um, why we are, uh, what, what is our understand for the parquet format, uh, the gzip? Yeah, did it ever have any advantages on the different dimensions you measured? Or was it generally a good idea to change away from gzip to something else? Um, I think for the, for the, uh, uh, I/O intensive workload, maybe gzip also uh, has still has some um, some uh, better better performance for the I/O intensive workload, such as we uh, the nine queries we picked up the TBCDS uh, is uh, uh, is uh, I like uh, I/O intensive workload, so the I uh, the gzip. Uh, has has uh, obvious better performance than the high throughput workload, which has a lower compression ratio. Thank you. Thanks. All right, let's give Sophia a big hand.